Welcome brothers and sisters. Today we delve into a topic of great significance, understanding and overcoming the spirits of Jezebel and Ahab. As we embark on this spiritual journey, we'll be examining the shadows of two biblical figures whose influences have transcend time to impact our lives today. Now, who were Jezebel and Ahab? These were two influential figures in the Old Testament, a queen and a king, whose actions and attitudes have left indelible marks on biblical history. Their spirits, characterized by manipulation, control, seduction, idolatry, weakness, passivity, and compromise, still permeate our world today, affecting relationships, workplaces, and even churches. But why is it necessary to understand and overcome these spirits? The answer lies in the profound impact they can have on our spiritual lives, on our relationships with others, and most importantly, on our relationship with God. By understanding the traits of these, these spirits and how they manifest in our lives, we can better equip ourselves to resist and overcome them. In this journey, we'll be guided by the wisdom of the scriptures. A notable reference point is Revelation chapter 2, verse 20, where it is written, Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication, and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. This scripture warns us against tolerating the teachings and influences of the Jezebel spirit in our lives. As we delve deeper into this topic, we'll explore the characteristics of these spirits, how they manifest in today's world, and most importantly, how to overcome them. We'll also delve into the importance of developing a spirit of righteousness and the steps we can take to achieve this. This journey will not be an easy one, but it is a necessary one. As we embark on it, let us lean on God's wisdom, draw strength from His Word, and seek His guidance every step of the way. As we embark on this journey, may we find guidance in Revelation 2.20, which warns against tolerating Jezebel and her teachings. To understand these spirits, we go back to the scriptures, to the story of King Ahab and Queen Jezebel. The biblical narrative paints a vivid portrait of these two figures who became synonymous with spiritual corruption and moral decline. Ahab, the king of Israel, was a man who did sell himself to work wickedness in the sight of the Lord, whom Jezebel, his wife, stirred up. As stated in 1 Kings 21-25, Ahab was a weak leader, easily swayed and manipulated by his wife, Jezebel, to commit acts of idolatry and injustice. This passivity and weakness are key traits of what we now recognize as the spirit of Ahab. Jezebel, on the other hand, was a woman of strong will and cunning. She used her influence over Ahab and her control over the false prophets to lead Israel into idolatry. Her actions, driven by a thirst for power and control, exemplify what we call the spirit of Jezebel. Now let's explore these spirits in more depth spirit of Jezebel is characterized by control, manipulation, seduction, and idolatry. Take for instance Jezebel's manipulation and control over Ahab and the false prophets in 1 Kings chapter 18 verse 21. She was not content with merely influencing her husband. She sought to control the spiritual direction of the entire nation, leading them away from God and towards the worship of Baal. The spirit of Ahab, conversely, is marked by weakness, passivity, and compromise. Ahab turned a blind eye to Jezebel's actions, allowing her to lead the nation into sin. His passive response to Jezebel's actions and his own disobedience are examples of the spirit of Ahab in action. These spirits are not confined to the pages of the Bible. They are alive and active in our world today. They can manifest in our relationships, workplaces, and even within our churches. The spirit of Jezebel can be seen in individuals who seek to control and manipulate others, often causing emotional and spiritual harm. The spirit of Ahab, on the other hand, can be seen in those who choose to remain passive in the face of injustice 
and sin, refusing to take a stand for what is right. The scriptures warn us against these spirits. 1 Samuel 15.23 tells us, For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. These spirits represent rebellion against God's authority and stubbornness in the face of His commands. Therefore, we must be vigilant in recognizing and rejecting these traits within ourselves and our communities. As we see in 1 Kings 21-25, Ahab's wickedness and Jezebel's influence set a dangerous precedent. However, it is important to remember that we are not powerless against these spirits. Through prayer, fasting, and obedience to God's Word, we can overcome these destructive influences and live a life of righteousness and victory. The battle may be spiritual, but the victory is assured for those who stand firm in their faith and reliance on God's power. Recognizing these spirits today. While Ahab and Jezebel belong to history, the spirits they embodied persist in our world today. They're not confined within the pages of the Bible, but continue to manifest themselves in our relationships, workplaces, and even our churches. You might be wondering, how does this happen? Let's delve into that. Often these spirits are subtle, creeping into our lives unnoticed. In relationships, for instance, someone influenced by the spirit of Jezebel may exert control and manipulation, causing emotional and spiritual harm. This person could be a friend, a family member, or even a romantic partner. They may use guilt, fear, or false affection to manipulate others seeking to control rather than to love. In workplaces too, these spirits can rear their heads. A person under the influence of the spirit of Jezebel might use power and position to control others. They may resort to unethical means to get what they want, disregarding the well-being of others in the process. Similarly, in churches, these spirits can manipulate and control causing division and strife. They can lead to the glorification of individuals rather than God and to the spread of false teachings. On the other hand, the spirit of Ahab manifests as passivity and compromise. It's the person who remains silent when they should speak up, who lets others take control when they should lead. This spirit can lead to a lack of spiritual growth and can cause people to fall into sin. It's crucial to recognize these spirits, not only in others, but also in ourselves. Sometimes we might unknowingly harbor these traits. We might control others out of fear or insecurity, or we might remain passive when we should stand firm in our faith. But let's not forget the words of Samuel, who warned that rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. These spirits of Jezebel and Ahab are rebellious and stubborn in nature. They oppose God's authority and lead us away from His path. Recognizing these spirits is the first step to overcoming them. It involves self-reflection, honesty, and the willingness to change. We must be vigilant, for these spirits are deceptive and can easily lead us astray. Remember, these spirits are not merely human traits. They're spiritual forces that seek to lead us away from God. They represent rebellion against God's authority and a refusal to submit to His will. But the good news is that we are not helpless against these spirits. As believers, we have the power of God within us. We can resist these spirits and overcome them, just as Jesus overcame the world. This is not to say that the task is easy. It requires spiritual discernment, vigilance, and a commitment to live according to God's Word. But with God's help, we can overcome these spirits and live in victory and righteousness. The scriptures warn us of the grave consequences of tolerating such spirits within ourselves and our communities. We must heed these warnings and strive to live in obedience to God. By doing so, we can overcome the spirits of Jezebel and Ahab and live in the freedom and victory that Christ has won for us. Recognizing these spirits is only the first step. Overcoming them is the real challenge.
In the world we live in today, we are often faced with situations that require us to wage spiritual warfare. These battles are not against flesh and blood, but against unseen forces that seek to control, manipulate, and lead us astray. As the Apostle Paul reminds us in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. In our journey to overcome the spirits of Jezebel and Ahab, it's important to remember that the spirit of righteousness is our greatest weapon. This spirit is characterized by humility, obedience to God, and spiritual strength. These traits are the antithesis of the control, manipulation, and passivity that the spirits of Jezebel and Ahab embody. James chapter 4 Verse 7 provides a powerful call to action. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. This verse reveals the powerful strategy that we need to embody. On one hand, we submit ourselves to God, acknowledging His sovereignty and aligning our lives with His will. On the other hand, we actively resist the devil and sin so the spirits of Jezebel and Ahab have no more authority in our lives. Overcoming these spirits is not a one-time event, but a continuous process that requires discipline, vigilance, and reliance on God's power. There are practical steps we can take to ensure we are equipped for this spiritual battle. First, engage in regular prayer and fasting. These spiritual disciplines help us to draw closer to God and to break demonic strongholds. They also sharpen our spiritual discernment, enabling us to identify the manifestations of these spirits in our lives. Next, immerse yourself in God's Word. The King James Bible is our guide and our source of truth. By regularly reading and praying on it, 2 Timothy chapter 17, verse 13. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, and of love, and of a sound mind. We renew our minds and align our thoughts with Jesus. It equips us to recognize the lies of the enemy and to stand on his promises. Finally, seek godly counsel and accountability within trusted Christian ministries. We are not meant to fight these battles alone. The fellowship as believers exists to encourage, support, and pray for one another. By being open and accountable, we can receive the true wisdom and guidance we need to overcome these evil spirits. Remember, we are not powerless against the spirits of Jezebel and Ahab. We are victorious in Christ, and He has given us the authority to overcome all the power of the enemy. But we must be proactive. We must guard our hearts, renew our minds, and stand firm in our faith. As we continue on this journey, let's remind ourselves of the call to humility and obedience in 1 Peter 5, 6. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that He may exalt you in due time. So let's rise to the challenge. Let's arm ourselves with the spirit of righteousness, clothe ourselves with humility, and stand firm in our obedience to God. And as we do so, we will find that the spirits of Jezebel and Ahab have no hold over us. By submitting to God and resisting the devil, we can overcome these spirits and break spiritual strongholds. Overcoming these spirits sets us on the path to victory and righteousness. This victory is not achieved through might or power, but by submitting to the supreme authority of our Heavenly Father. It requires a humble heart, a heart that acknowledges our dependence on God and submits to His perfect will. Proverbs reminds us in chapter 29, verse 23, A man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. This humility is not about self-degradation or thinking less of ourselves. It's about recognizing our place in the grand scheme of things. It's about acknowledging that we are not the center of the universe, but rather we are part of a larger story authored by God Himself. This humility allows us to yield control to God, to trust in His perfect plan, 
and to let go of our need for power and control. Living under God's authority means to place our lives under His rule and reign. It's about surrendering our rights, our plans, our dreams, and our desires to Him. It's about seeking His will above our own, His plans above our plans, His desires above our desires. It's about living for His glory and not our own. When we choose to live under God's authority, we choose to live a life of submission, a life of obedience, a life of trust, and ultimately, a life of victory and righteousness. But, let us not forget, this path is not always easy. It is a path of resistance, a path of warfare, a path of constant vigilance. As we strive to live under God's authority, we will face opposition, we will face trials and temptations, we will face the roaring lion seeking to devour us. Peter warns us in, first. Peter, chapter 5, verse 8. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. This warning is not meant to scare us, but to prepare us. It's meant to remind us that we are in a battle, a spiritual battle. And in this battle we are not helpless. We are not powerless. We are equipped with the armor of God, the Word of God, and the Spirit of God. We have the victory in Christ Jesus. So let us stand firm in faith. Let us resist the devil and his demonic influences. Let us persevere in righteousness. Let us cling to the promise that when we resist the devil, he will flee from us. Let us hold fast to our faith knowing that the same sufferings are being experienced by our brothers and sisters around the world. And after we have suffered a little while, the grace of God who has called us to his eternal glory in Christ will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish us. Let us remain vigilant, for our adversary prowls like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Today we have delved deep into a topic that is both challenging and crucial. We've traced the narratives of Jezebel and Ahab, analyzed their damaging characteristics, and recognized how these spirits sneak into our lives today. It's evident that identifying and conquering these spirits demand a watchful, virtuous heart and an unwavering dependence on God's power. The spirit of Jezebel, characterized by control, manipulation, and idolatry, and the spirit of Ahab, identified by frailty, passivity, and compromise, can insidiously infiltrate our relationships, workplaces, and churches. However, we have discovered that we are not defenseless in this spiritual warfare. We are invited to cultivate a spirit of righteousness, marked by humility, obedience to God, and spiritual strength. By submerging ourselves in God's word, pursuing godly advice and accountability, and participating in regular prayer and fasting, we can dismantle these spiritual strongholds. I invite you now to take a moment to reflect. Consider the areas in your lives where these spirits might have gained influence. And in response, let us commit together to reject these traits and to seek after God's righteousness instead. Now, let us pray. We pray for God's protection wisdom and strength to conquer the spirits of Jezebel and Ahab. May God bless us, sending us forth with the assurance of his presence and power in our lives. May we always stay vigilant, always righteous, and always reliant on God's power as we endeavor to overcome the spirits of Jezebel and Ahab. As we conclude this enlightening journey, I want to express my deep gratitude for your companionship on this path of understanding and overcoming the spirits of Jezebel and Ahab. This journey has hopefully not only enlightened you, but also inspired you to take a step further in your own spiritual journey. You are now invited to become an integral part of our divine mission at AwakeningRighteousness.com. On our website, you'll discover a wealth of resources to support your spiritual growth. You'll find our blog full of insightful articles, a selection of Christian books, and canvas art that delve deeper into the profound teachings of the Bible. We're thrilled to introduce the latest addition to the Awakening Righteousness series. 
overcoming and standing against the Ahab and Jezebel spirits. This new book is an in-depth exploration of the truth we explored today, offering practical steps to break free from these demonic strongholds through prayer, fasting, and God's Word. We also offer an audiobook version for those who prefer to listen. By our ministry, you are not only enriching your own true Christian journey, but also contributing to our mission of spreading God's teachings and igniting faith in many hearts. Together, we can make a difference on this earth. Click the link in the description to get your copy of Overcoming and Standing Against the Ahab and Jezebel Spirits and to explore our other resources. Thank you for watching and may God bless you on your journey. Stay blessed, awaken the righteous version of yourself, and join us in this holy mission of saving souls. God be with you. Amen. Thank you.